I, uh, I've not been on video for a while, um, mostly to do with um, personal stuff that uh, I'm not going to bore you with. Um, <clears throat> with the weather as well, when I've taken the camera out with me to um, try and do videos, um, you can't bank on the weather and if it starts pouring down and um, the situation just not right, then you just got to let it go. So yeah, it's been a while and I'm hoping to start catching up again now, um, although there's still, still a few difficulties that um, uh, because it's family, it comes first. Anyway, I've decided to, uh, there's a few things I want to try and get into this video quick, so I'm not going to um, waste too much time explaining, but um, something that's come to my attention recently, what well, because of emails on some of my old Ergun videos that I've done, and a few things that I'm seeing um, on YouTube with people who well, they don't attend Ergon clubs. If you attend an Ergon club, then you learn all the rules and, and the laws and, and such like. Uh, in 2007, in this country, the law changed quite drastically, really, uh, as far as Ergons were concerned. And in 2000, I think it was 11, um, there was another law came in regarding um, storage of your Ergons in your own home, if you have a family, especially... Um, children. Um, so I'm going to quickly address this because I feel that there are people who are going out with air rifles that are letting the Ergon community as a whole down and risking imprisonment. Um, I don't want to get too boring on this but first of all you've got to be 18 or over to be able to own an Ergon and even then, you've got to be accompanied by somebody who's 21 years old in order to be able to take that ergon out. While you're safe to shoot on your own property, or property where you have permission, in other words, you've gone to the landowner and you've asked for permission to shoot, and you've assessed that it is safe to shoot there, in other words, you know that all your pellets are going to stay within that environment, within the fence line, whatever. Um, you cannot anymore take an ergon out and go shooting down the canal, the river, across water. Uh, there are laws regarding that um, without permission. Um, and you would only get permission to shoot down the river or the canal of the water authority. And I can tell you now, I don't think they're going to grant it unless you work for them. Um, as I said, in 2007 the laws did change quite drastically in that you couldn't um, go online to a shop and order a gun and it'd be coming to you by post unless there was certain requirements that seemed to be uh, um, being met in some circumstances. But in the majority, you no, know, you have to go to a shop and it has to be a face-to-face -face sale. Private air gun sales can be done, but if you're not checking to make sure that the person is one, old enough and two, you're sending a gun to somebody with a criminal record, then you're liable as well. Um, if you have a criminal record and you've been, even if you're not actually, don't actually go to prison, you've been sentenced to, I think it's 80, 18 months or more. Um, I'm saying 18 months because this was the situation to somebody I, I knew who got into trouble for selling DVDs. Um, basically somebody who he knew lied about him and eventually he ended up actually serving a six month sentence uh, on it. But the crux of this thing is he was banned from owning, touching or attending Ergon clubs uh, for five years. Had he got longer than that, it could have been 10 years or life, a life ban. Now for me, I've been shooting since I was nine year old and I got back into it again around, I had a little break but, um, in, I think it was mid middle to late twenties because of my family and then got back into it again around 2004 when I started going to the club I've been going to ever since. I've been uh, secretary, assistant secretary in various other stations at this club and it was 
you know, my job to be up on the laws. Um, keeping up with them is pretty hard and things are, are, are pretty drastic um, these days. You've got to stand up for your community, toe the line, uh, not turn a blind eye to people breaking the law. So if you know somebody has a criminal record and shouldn't be shooting, either have a word with them or have a word with the authorities because everything the, uh, the, the single person does comes back. One bad apple in the bag spoils the rest kind of thing. Um, I've seen videos where people are going out for the day, hiking um, or camping um, and they're taking air guns with them and because they have been given permission to to camp overnight or, or, or whatever, they think they can take an air rifle along with them and shoot that air rifle. That's not so. That is a separate requirement. You must go and ask a landowner before taking an ergon onto his land because it's a firearms one offence. You can get five years imprisonment and a £10,000 fine or either separate. It depends on the authorities at the time. So, bear this in mind, you cannot take an ergon out willy-nilly and just go off shooting somewhere. That can't be done anymore. You have to have permission to be where you are. If you t you cannot take a, um, an ergon into a public area unless you've got permission to be there. You need permission to be where you are with your gun now. You can shoot it on your own property, you can shoot it in your backyard, providing that no pellet leaves uh, your grounds. The law is on your side that way. Um, I've heard about, uh, well, I said I've heard, I saw a video about a young fella. A, he wasn't old enough to be owning an ergon. There was some woodland at the end of his house that he was going out into, and he was shooting birds at roost. Um, it, this came onto a forum that I was admin on, and um, you could have filled two sides of an A4 page with the comments that came back at him. And I think in the end, um, because Facebook is monitored, um, the authorities found out where he lived and got in touch with him. So, um, going out bragging on, online, on Facebook, doing silly things. No, no, you can't do it. Think about what you're saying and doing. Air guns are now regarded as a firearm. And most of the uh, punishments uh, firearms one unless you have a gun that's been banned or is forbidden which comes firearms uh, five forbid, forbidden items prohibited items so really think about this you need to be 18 to go out with an air gun you can, a, a younger a younger person can go out with the parents providing they're on land where they have permission to be that younger person cannot own that air gun the parent must own the air gun now I mentioned another law that came in um, because of um, some children that had been shot at home. A parent had been cleaning an air gun, phone rang, somebody knocked on the door, put the air gun down, child came in, got the gun, shot itself. So what are little children doing? They play with things. So now the law says you must have them guns locked away. You know, particularly under 12 foot pounds have to have um, a gun safe that's uh, comes uh, within the firearms requirement thing but it has to be a place where it's locked away and nobody else can access it but you and it doesn't matter about whatever age it is it is now your responsibility and a £1,000 fine for not doing so so if you have family whatever I mean it came in because of children but whatever you are now responsible for locking them away and making sure that nobody can pick their guns up unless they have your permission to do so. So you've got to think about these these things because uh, it's very serious. Uh, I mean, look at Scotland now, they're trying to force uh, um, licensing on Ergon in there. This came about because some um, drug up idiot shot out of a, a block of flats and killed a baby. Now, the authorities in Scotland are using this as their push for 
this firearms license and what they don't bring up is that the family whose child was shot were the ones who sold the person the drugs. They seem to be hiding that. It's not an excuse, but um, they're using a, a false premise really there. Um, they were using that family as their, you know, their child got kill, killed because of... That family should have been um, sentenced as well, because they sold the drugs. They were the cause of their own child being killed. So, anyway, um, there'll be a lot of feelings about that, um, so... I'm not going to go too far on that, but what I'm trying to point out is that I love uh, gunning and I know there's about 4 million other people who uh, love uh, gunning and you get this um, one bad apple comes along and spoils it and all the lefties uh, jump in with ban the gun, ban the gun, ban the gun um, because they can't see that anybody else should live any differently than the way they think. Um, remember you can't take your gun out with you camping or walking or hiking if you are walking in places where you do not have permission to be. That is the law. End of. Um, Shane, fast action blades. Thanks for sending me the badge. Although I think in this country, I think quite a few people think I'm a member of um, Fanderson which is uh, Jerry Anderson's um, fan organisation. However, thank you very much. If nobody knows who Fast Action Blades are, go across and have a look. Knife throwing, axe throwing, sword uh, work. You'll love it. Um, uh, quick, quick one on a knife. I was kept hearing about this uh, now world, world legal um, non-locking knife by uh, Williamson Lank Lans Lansky. It says grey on the back. I don't know why it says grey because um, the handle uh, is black. Well, it is to my eyes anyway. However, there is um, what looks like an acid wash on the uh, the blade, I could be wrong, I don't know tons about it, but um, here we are. If I can get that in focus, all right. As you can see, the handle is black. I don't know if it's a my counter or plastic molded. I think it's probably plastic molded myself or something along them lines, but it feels good and very grippy. Um, it's a chunky knife and there are four positions for this pocket clip to go. There's a big hefty bit on the end there that um, with the feel of this knife you you could um, you could belt something with that. This knife would take it. You'd smash it a car window quite easily. The blade itself which comes out here is a, a nice click through the two positions. Did you hear that? And it's a chunky looking blade. You know, slight drop down points on it. Um, as you can see, I don't know if I'm catching the light properly here because uh, it seems to look a bit funny today. Everything's I've tried to photograph has come out bluish. So, so hope I'm getting this. It isn't. It hasn't arrived as sharp as uh, some blades that I've had. There's a little bit of sharpness there, but not what I would have expected. But anyway. Um, that won't be too hard to saw, although there's a bit of a curve in that blade just there, as you can see. And then, of course, there's the uh, the different facets to this grind, as they're probably professionally say, so, but um, it's all very nice and chunky. Having said that, um, this being pushed down, you know the one legal knife that can be used in, in most countries in actual fact with with the the eft of this i mean i've not got small hands i've got quite big hands but with the eft and weight of this um compared to say my um, columbia river 
uh, edgy, which again is, you know, non-mocking legal knife, but it has a, a kind of like Warncliffe uh, rounded end to it, which doesn't look threatening at all. I think this could be still deemed as a threatening kind of knife, in the UK at least, should you be stopped with it. So you don't want to be in the wrong area, and you don't want to be have it in your pocket at the wrong time. But having said that, for I got this one, including postage, at a pretty good price of £14, which, well, you know, looking at other prices online, um, that's quite chuffed with. A, bar a bargain always makes something feel a bit better. Closing it again, it's a bit of a stiff closure and it does go through to positions. However, with that snap back there, seems to be doing it in slow motion on my camera, but I would be uh, very careful because it's a bit stiff. It'll probably loosen up after a bit, but if your finger's in the wrong place there as you're shutting it, bang. But anyway, lovely knife, glad I got it. and. Um, Thoroughly recommend it. It looks a good, strong working tool, and of course, it's got the landskin aim. If we can just catch that in the light, um, which uh, do remarkable sharpness. So, um, what time am I running? I'm going to be careful here because uh, these days trying to get stuff on on YouTube is uh, horrendous. Um, the other thing is, let me just step back again. That I want to point out um, for some reason. Um, the like button on my YouTube page has disappeared and the add to um, and whatever the three other headings that are on this side have moved over to where the like button should be and there is no like button so I like to go on pages even if somebody's talking about something that I don't particularly have an interest in or follow I always um, put a like um, what's the point of you know being sub to somebody if you're not going to try and you know support their channel that's what it's about um, so don't just go and browse and then wander on again and don't think about doing anything unless of course like me you can't do the like anymore which I'm finding very annoying it's bugging me um, wanted to bring this I'm not sure whether it really is zip or not to tell you the truth I got it off eBay it's touted as a 1000 strike match you put a bit of um, petrol lighter fluid in inside the container not too much there's only put a, a small bit in the bottom um, you unscrew the match which has a bit of um, material on now if you use this as it's meant to be used you strike it you light your candle, your fire, whatever, blow it out quickly, put it away, then it says it will last for the thousand strikes. However, if you don't, and you, you stood there with it burning, or you're keeping it hanging on, then you're going to reduce the amount of work time it is. It's a striker, basically, flint, flint and steel striker. If I can just, whatever, you see the spark. And there's the flame. I've recently put some uh, lighter fluid in here. It um, calms down a little bit once um, you've used it, or you, you let a bit of the uh, the you know let some of the fumes get out. But here we go, one more, and there it goes again. It's a flint and striker. Works very well. It's very small, as you can see. Um, put it next to my thumb. Yeah. Easy to put in your pocket, it's got a key ring thing on it, you can have it on a key ring. Hanging from your bag belt up, it's a perfectly um, waterproof uh, metal container. Your striker, your uh, flint bit, you see it, whatever it is, the strip in there. I'm not sure whether they've done this the, uh, the way around, around you would use your knife and um, striker so I'm not sure because I can't see that close with these glasses stupid though it seems but anyway nice oh and there is a coating on, on this as there is with some strikers so your first few times you have to um, work at it to get that uh, coating off but once you've done it then uh, a good whip down the 
he says and there it goes again as you can see that uh, bit of material if it'll, make, if it'll stay focused is only lightly singed hardly used and I have actually done this I'd say a, a good 20 or 30 times because I've let things with it I never got two of these just in case because there was only a, about a pound or something off eBay so that is a remarkable uh, you know campaign tool or whatever uh, for a quick light um, it seems to resist because of the petrol uh, reasonable winds I wouldn't say um, gale force winds you know but uh, you get the meaning um, there was something else I wanted to talk about oh when I did say that I'd uh, finish with the uh, last of my big knives and then I came across I've got uh, two versions of this I've got one with a hook on the back as well but uh, it's remarkably like a bird with a hole in the middle anyway it's uh, it's a bill hook and it's a very good coppicing tool and also be a very good um, zombie killing tool because of that nice hook on the front uh, and if the shit's ever hit the fan well don't ever be in front of me when I'm swinging this about um, it has a nice weight and balance to it and um, I'd say as good as a cookery when you get them they need some work on that blade because the blade is virtually blunt when they turn up I don't know what the purpose is perhaps uh, Perhaps it's just the way they throw them together. Uh, I'm not going to surmise. The handle on, on this particular one and uh, and the other one that I've got is actually leather and it seems to be like leather rings slid on and then all glued together. There's a little guard there. Am I getting this right? A little guard there. And your hand slides in. It helps you both to grip and the leather helps you to grip. Um, for swinging but having said that it's just so nicely uh, balanced you know it's um, I've come a lot, across a lot worse machetes and such like than that uh, it cost me about 15 pounds online or something like that from Toolzone you can get them off eBay as well um, for I think next to nothing but uh, if you're in the UK I think I think it was UK anyway, yeah. Uh, I think I must be going off my rocker as well. Um, so coming back to um, what I was saying before, uh, what prompted me to jump into this. Don't think you can sling an air gun if you are old enough to own and use one into the back of your car and take it anywhere. If you are carrying it, if you have not got a boot in your car, it must be in a gun bag or it must be covered in such a way as you can't turn around and easily access that. Because this is, if you stopped what the police will look for, you've got a gun within reach that you could use as a weapon. So, think about that. It's well wrapped up, out of the way, not within easy reach. If that's the only way you can carry it, like you've no boot, uh, don't put it on the back seat on the floor behind so that it's not within easy reach um, make sure that when you buy a gun that you know what power it is um, for people coming back into or just beginning with air gunning there are uh, laws regarding air guns now where there is a 12 foot pound limit for non-licensed guns everything underneath that is um, is not FAC, above that is FAC. There are no excuses and no excuses are accepted. If you have a gun over the 12 foot pound limit, you're going to get fined or even imprisoned. You'll get your guns taken off you and you'll be banned. So it's not worth it. Somebody was talking about my gun only shoots 9 foot pounds. How do I get it up to nearly 12 foot pounds? It depends what you, you need your gun for to start with. But if you're only shooting at a club on a target range, nine foot pounds, I let targets out to 70 or 80 metres, no problem. Especially 177, which has a, a flatter trajectory. I use 22 all the time. Well, that's because I do pest control and hunting as well. And I prefer 22 
pellets because of the impact and because I've never seen a 2-2 pellet go straight through the pest that I'm shooting at. I've seen plenty of one some some pellets pass straight through, which means they're still carrying energy with them as they go away. And it's something to be aware of the fallout, as with you know any uh, any gun. Um, yes, yeah, so there's there is a power limit. Um, I just recently, I well, I acquired it very early in the year as part of an exchange. I needed some money. I sold a gun I didn't really need, but as part of exchange, I got a lump of money, and I got this gun. When I chronoed this gun, this gun was over 12 foot pounds, which you know set me in a panic right away. Um, I got the gun turned down, I got the gun turned down to 10, 10 foot pounds. And people say, well, why? Well, that's a bit low, why not? It's a gun for only shooting at the range. It doesn't need to be ultra powerful for target shooting. I can knock down any of the, the uh, knockdown targets we use, which are tested with. Um, Grimfire, HMR, um, so they're quite heavyweight. Oh yeah, my pellets can knock them down, knock them back up again. Um, I can hit the spinners and all sorts, no problem. I don't try to um, shoot much further than, uh, I'd say 70 metres these days, but I can still hit the 90 metre on occasion if, if the wind allows and spin the spinner. You don't need to be over the top powerful for shooting at a club, it's not necessary. If you're out hunting, then you need to be at least 10 foot pounds, I would say. Um, if you can start right in, in, in to, up to where you're, the rabbits, the pigeons, the crows, or whatever are that are causing the nuisance, then it only needs three foot pounds on impact to kill, not leaving the gun on impact. So, you know, nine, ten foot pounds, close range, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards, you're not going to have a problem. If you're going to start shooting out to 50 metres and beyond, then I would say 11 foot pounds. You do not need 11, 8, 11, 9, so that you're almost touching 12 foot pounds, because that can get you into trouble if, if your guns are taken and tested. I say keep it at 11, 11, 4, and... This is personal, but um, from what I've seen, um, if you go too much further than that, it's quite easy to show that an ergon can be pushed over the 12 foot pound limits with an heavier weight pellet. So don't take chances. Um, I, I'm hoping that where we're going with this now, 28 minutes, so I expect time to sign off really. but. Uh, I really am impassioned about this. This is my sport and it's under threat. It's the sport of four million other people. We have youngsters coming in all the time that uh, possibly one day I might go on to Olympic shooting because this is where it starts at ground level, getting them interested, getting them to know the law and do things right. Um, we don't want idiots coming along and saying, well, you know, nobody will know if I do this, nobody will see me if I do this. Because when you get caught, it, it's the papers. and. The papers love to play with stuff like this. So don't play games what, with what is four million other people or more sport. Yeah? Just just think about it, have a care. Um, and there are only so many species that you can shoot and you have to have a reason to shoot them. You can't wait willy nilly just shooting everything in sight. There's only so many pest species. If you go to the BASC site, um, they have lists of the species, but usually it's just um, rabbit, pigeon, rat, crow, magpie, and in a lot of cases you have to show that they cannot be reasonably controlled in another way. Um, to be honest, from um, what I've seen, um, Controlling them, frightening them off, making them go away from an area with whatever else you use does not work with crows, magpies, pigeons. They always return back. You can't frighten them away from the place. Um, you, you can't cause them to one feed in one area if you've got a barn full of um, grain or um, cattle, whatever. I don't want to get too too far away from what my main point is about the law requires 
stick to that law. For God's sake, don't endanger her gunning for other people for something you don't have a passion about. Anyway, I hope it's uh, so I'm going to try and get back into making videos regularly again and I'm hoping to cover a lot of the aspects of because um, I have so many people that I'm sub to but I will be doing more on model making as well and I noticed last time that only three or four people um, made a comment uh, or a thumb up um, I'm going to start looking at who's coming to my page and uh, thumbing up and I'm not going to be sub to people who can't even be bothered to come and have a look at my channel and, uh, and watch my videos. Um, I just haven't time for that sort of thing. Um, I can understand with people who have a thousand uh, followers and such like, but people who are in the category like me with you know less than, I think I'm about 300 or something like that, I, I don't look so. But, when, you, when you've not so many, and there's only, what, 20 or 30, 30 a day turning up, um, you can quite easily uh, play through them. Um, it doesn't take that long. Most of them are, you know, 10 minutes at a time, something like that. You get a couple of big ones like this is, is turning out to be, but um, it's up to you. Um, um, anybody knows why this like button's disappeared or uh, if there's a way to get it back I'd be damned interested to know because it is really annoying me like I said um, I'm sub to people that um, I like for a particular reason for whatever they're doing the personalities or whatever and as a follower I like to go and put a like on their page to show that I am supporting their channel um, it's not too hard it doesn't hurt maybe they need to go press the button I want that like button back again so that I can do that. So if anybody knows what's up, please tell me. Um, so anyway, I've, <laughs> I've rambled on now and I didn't want it to be too serious a, a video. Um, but uh, I think some of the, the up and coming videos might um, feature my grandson who has just turned 13 and shown an interest in coming to the club and being a member. So um, I'm not going to video him uh, when he's pasting the arse off me with his shooting, which he seems to be doing, but um, he might feature in some of my videos. Okay, anyway, bye for now, keep well, funky, keep your chin up fella, I know what you're going through, I know it, it's, uh, it's bloody hard, um, it's hard to deal with, um, keep your chin up, and make sure you get plenty of help from people close to you, find words online, don't, uh, don't help you when you're in this situation. Bye for now folks.